Hello, my name is Sheridan Villarreal, and I will be presenting Trans Futurities, Clearing the Cyborg as an Act of Transgender Disidentification. At approximately eight minutes, this presentation contains imagery of bright, flashing, and pulsating light. This may potentially trigger seizures for people with photosensitive epilepsy. The sheen of sweat and metal. Synthetic bodies augmented by hormone hacking, implants, and prosthetic sensory interfaces. Beings which can transform the conditions of their embodiment at will and operate, sometimes undetected, within society every day. Defying conceptions of natural order, the cyborg transgresses binaries of organic and synthetic human and machine. The cyborg is a modern monster which emerged from the chimeric hybrids of myth in reaction to the discoveries of enlightenment science and the supplementation of human labor by power-driven machinery. As discoveries in medicine, physics, and engineering propelled the integration of technology into human society, the phantasm of the cyborg became ever more menacing. Popular culture of the 20th century, including cinema, literature, and visual art, featured a greater number of cyborg antagonists, symbolizing both the fear of oncoming technological omnipresence and that of the destabilizing cultural other, which threatened the supposedly natural order. In her 1994 essay, My Words to Victor Frankenstein Above the Village of Chamonix, Performing Transgender Rage, scholar and transgender studies theorist Susan Stryker evoked the first cyborg, Frankenstein's monster, when she declared, quote, the transsexual body is an unnatural body. It is the product of medical science. It is a technological construction. It is flesh torn apart and sewn together again and shaped other than that which it was born. A transgender woman herself, Stryker draws affinity between the transgender experience and that of the cyborg, both of which are demonized for their transgression and perceive corruption of stable binaries, including the belief in innate or fixed genders inextricable to one's sex assigned at birth. At present, the transgender community is both more visible than ever before and yet continues to endure violent oppression, exclusion, and erasure from both the cisgender queer community and the cisgender patriarchy. Just as 2021 became the deadliest year on record for transgender and gender nonconforming people within the United States, with at least 50 documented murders and countless still missing or misgendered after their death. An unprecedented 144 anti-trans bills have been either introduced or passed within the last year. Such legislation intends to criminalize access to life-saving gender-affirming health care, civil protections, and full participation in society for trans individuals within the United States. In effect, codifying the cycles of marginalization and violence enacted against the trans body year after year. Given this dire context, it may come as some surprise that a growing number of contemporary trans artists have not only embraced, but even reveled in such associations <clears throat> between notions of the cyborg and transgender subjectivity, invoking the cyborg figure to explore ideas of gender, sex, and the body in a world increasingly mediated through technology. My presentation will analyze one such artist and seek to answer the following questions. Why would an already demonized subject embrace or otherwise willingly align their position with that of monstrosity? What social or political strategies are at play and what outcomes are at stake? I propose that by invoking the cyborg figure as monstrous gender transgressor, the transgender artist enacts a strategy of disidentification. The theory of disidentification was first proposed by scholar of queer studies, Jose Esteban Muñoz, to explain how subjects whose identities are outside the racial or sexual mainstream may negotiate the dominant culture, neither aligning themselves totally with or diametrically against exclusionary works of art, instead positioning themselves within the oppressive discourse so that they may subvert and reinscribe its meaning for their own cultural purpose. Released in 2020, Non-Binary is a short film and music video by Venezuelan interdisciplinary musician producer and performance artist Alejandra Gersi, professionally known as Arca, to accompany her fourth studio album, Kick One. Created in collaboration with Belgian multimedia artist Frederick Hyman, the video is composed of real footage interset with photorealistic sequences of photogrammetry. 
a process by which sophisticated three-dimensional digital models can be recreated and animated from still photographs or motion capture video. Non-Binary and its accompanying album was Arca's first major release after beginning her trans feminine gender transition in 2018, coming out as a non-binary trans woman that same year. Explaining to fans about her decision to transition, she said that she found herself returning to the same question over and over. What kind of body do I want to leave behind? Tides come and go, but our body is the only thing I consider to be one's own. The most intimate canvas won't be modified to express some criteria of beauty, or some faith, or some hope. Given this context, non-binary is a comprehensive work of art incorporating sound, lyrics, and visuals prefer a manifesto on being gender non-binary as both an identity and philosophy of embodiment. In the film, Arca occupies surreal set pieces which steam and glisten, organic elements augmented by prosthetics, valves, wires, and machinery. Notions of the post-human is a prevailing thematic and aesthetic element of the artist's practice, saying, quote, working with these themes of body and technology is something that I've been drawn to since as long as I can remember. Arca's fascination with the cybernetic was first inspired by her love of anime, high fantasy video games, and the science fiction novels of Ursula K. Le Guin, interests which would later introduce her to the genre of electronic music and inform her practices post-human aesthetic. Sonically, the two-minute English language track features a cadence vocal monologue layered atop hard-hitting percussion, electronic beats, and discordant metallic tones, culminating in a climax of dramatic, echoing melodies. Arca's monologue addresses the listener directly, recounting both her good fortune to be able to share her art, but also the difficulty she's faced as a diasporic Venezuelan and transgender woman. She then implores the listener to, quote, speak for yourself states, a mantra which reflects the artist's belief on being non-binary and that it recognizes the presence of, quote, multifaceted, distinct elements of an individual while simultaneously representing a single unit or whole. This philosophy echoes that of post-human feminist scholar Donna Haraway in 1991's A Cyborg Manifesto. In the essay, Haraway describes a cyborg as both, quote, a creature of social reality as well as a creature of fiction, end quote, and reports that the cyborg figure is of great importance to contemporary society and even has the ability to alter our lived experience by modeling the transformation induced by our symbiotic relationship with technology. Haraway applies this concept to the political situation of women, proposing that by embracing hybrid identities and coming to terms of our cyborgness, there exists a the potential to dismantle the coercive social forces of gender regulation and control. The opening sequence of non-binary depicts the artist lying nude atop a smoldering rock pierced by enormous metal shears, a gesture evoking both the operating table and surgical incision. Unobscured by garments, her cyborgness is made evident by both exoskeletal implants and the presence of male and female sex characteristics as induced by hormone replacement therapy. Despite the fact that the transgender body has long endured the lurid fixation of the cisgender gaze, which demands intimate knowledge of said individual's genitalia, any such depiction of authentic trans bodies within visual culture remains taboo. As a necessity of survival and social acceptance, Transgender subjects are expected to conceal any feature which does not align with the correct performance of their gender identity. In effect, in order to be recognized as legitimate and not gender imposters, these subjects are required to erase any indication of their transgender origin or identity. This tactic is referred to as passing, as in, quote, passing forces gender. While passing is and can be an important method of evading violence, a milestone in gender transition, and highly beneficial to emotional well-being, it is also coercively enforced by cis heteronormative society, thereby reaffirming existing conventions of correct and incorrect gender bodies. Arca addresses this dynamic, saying, quote, There is a particular kind of skepticism or cynicism in the face of the modified body, as if there was a shame to the transformation of the body, end quote. Arca resists these assimilationist pressures by laying bare the condition of her unabashedly trans embodiment and embracing the state of flux between binary conceptions of gender. 
The sequence also inspires association to the Western art historical canon, especially portrayals of the mythical Hermaphroditus, whom Ovid's Metamorphoses identifies as the intersex offspring of ancient Roman deities Venus and Mercury. The lesser known second century Italian marvel, Sleeping Venus or Hermaphrodite, depicts a nude Hermaphroditus reclining on a rock covered by a huge drapery, similarly to Argus Coves in Non Binary. This interpretation is supported by a later sequence, which recreates Sandra Bonicelli's iconic 1485 painting, The Birth of Venus. As reimagined by Gersi and Hyman, Argo assumes the role of the newly born goddess in love and beauty as she emerges from the sea. Even as Arca aligns the transgender subject with divinity, she never forsakes monstrosity as symbolized by the cyborg. The enormous sea scallop, which serves as a vehicle for her arrival, has been augmented by articulated robot arms and electrode implants, signifying the condition of her birth made possible by technological intervention such as HRT or cosmetic surgery. Arca poses delicately in stilettos as the robotic arms with futuristic flares an emotion reminiscent of the ritual incense burning as practiced within Catholic Venezuela. Blossoms spring forth from her limbs, further indicating notions of transformation and the elation of gender euphoria as embodiment finally aligns with mind and soul. The conceptual through line of corporeal and spiritual transformation is elaborated further in the following sequence, which portrays a heavily pregnant arca within a futuristic delivery room. She reclines on a luxurious birthing bed, her distended still prosthetics supported by stirrups. Attending to her needs are three cyborg midwives. Appearing more machine than human, their bodies are constructed of robotic armatures, which support and encase biologic organs, including intestines and the brain. A translucent membrane or synthetic skin covers their torsos, complete with humanoid breasts reminiscent of silicone implants. Yet another technological augmentation, at times used to enhance the bodily performance of gender identity. While they may appear passive at first, the midwives are active agents and vital to understanding the significance of the appending birth. The cyborg at Arca's head waves two futuristic candelabras in tandem as those on either side carry flares, performing a cleansing ritual commonly practiced throughout Latin America, which combines indigenous Venezuelan and colonial Catholic beliefs. This ritual does not merely dispel negative energy, it transmutes it into that which is positive. Understanding this ritual is vital to appraising its utility to a philosophy of transgender embodiment. Arca is not implying that purification begets transformation. Instead, she is proposing far more radically that transmutation of elements in equal parts monstrous and divine is what will induce post-human evolution beyond binary limitations. By evoking the cyborg as a metaphor for the experience of transgender embodiment, Arca lays claim to the discourse of monstrosity that has been leveled against her by the dominant cis-heteronormative ideology. In accordance with the theory first proposed by José Esteban Muñoz, the artist enacts a strategy of transgender disidentification by identifying herself within the oppressive discourse deployed by historical iterations of the cyborg figure so that she may subvert and alter its meaning. Saying, quote, that's where non-binary mode of thinking feels really fertile. It opens possibilities rather than collapsing things, allowing for change without resisting it. By doing so, Arca compellingly reinscribes the cyborg figure from dehumanizing corruption of natural order to an emancipatory expression of transgender 